Hello and welcome to the Your Revolution podcast. The Your Revolution podcast is a collaboration between Revolution Personal and Performance Training in Melbourne and the Me Project. The purpose of the Your Revolution podcast is to inspire you on your mission of betterment. Each week on the podcast, you'll meet game changers who have created extraordinary lives and you'll listen to stories and lessons to empower you to make the changes necessary to your life. The Your Revolution podcast is committed to fitness, health, nutrition, mindset, community, education, empowerment and betterment and we hope that you can take what you learn here and apply it to your very own revolution. Welcome to episode 101 of the Your Revolution podcast. I am your host, Greg Corpanetis, and as with every episode, head over to revopt.com.au slash podcast. Now, I just wanted to actually kick the podcast off by saying that this episode, I believe, is the longest one of the Your Revolution podcast history. So, first episode in the chair, there you go, I'm already setting records. Uh, but look, on a serious note, like a lot of that I think has to do with the guest that I'll be interviewing today, and that is Christian Woodford. Now, look, uh, Christian has been a leader in the health and fitness industry for, and look, has really been calling for change and embedment. Uh, look, for someone like myself who loves the industry, and, look, and I've been it for nine years, so I can tell you right now, I've even been frustrated at times with the direction of the industry. And um, yeah, look, it's hard, especially when there is so much potential for it to get better. A lot of people think this industry is all sunshine and rainbows, but look, I can tell you from my experience that it's not a walk in the park. It's uh, it's not a job you can just walk in and think you can make a quick buck. It requires uh, a lot of love and a lot of passion and more importantly, continual involvement uh, to look to get better and better. So, and look, and this brings me back onto Christian because he's one of those guys and for a long time, he's put his neck out there and being the leading voice in this area for change. So look, I'm, I was super excited for the opportunity to meet him and, and see, uh, not only just hear from his vast knowledge and passion for the fitness industry, and look, it benefited me, but um, I believe it's gonna come as inspiration for fellow health and fitness professionals, but also people, you know, who've ever doubted themselves and, you know, what they do and yeah. So look, without further ado, let's hear from the man who is changing the game raising the standards in the industry and putting Australia on the map. Enjoy this episode, guys. All right, we're here at Woodford Strength Conditioning with the man himself, Christian Woodford. Uh, thank you for joining me and uh, welcome to your Revolution podcast. Thank you, sir. As yeah. Woodford Sports Science Consulting. Oh, sorry, I'm through a bad starter. <laughs> no, we're not through a bad start. You're a good man. Listen, I've just chewed Dean's ear off for about fucking Greg's ear. Greg? Greg, yeah. Have I lost that? Have I ever forgotten you fucking... <laughs> I'm an arsehole. I really am an arsehole, guys. That's normal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, no, I've, chewed, I've chewed your ear on. How long have I chewed your ear? But I need to get to know you. I don't even know what I said yes to. But you know what? Yeah. You've come all the way here. And my thing is, I, my, our job is communication. Relationship. Yeah. And that's what it is. If you can't build relationships, you're fucked. And people either love me or hate me, but when you meet me, I'm a good person. So that's how, if you're on my side, you're on my side. If you want to get better, I'm going to help. So that's why I've been on this podcast. Yeah. And also, behind me, is uh, Christian Jr. And why did you ask me just before how old I was? Do I look young or older? It's the, hair, it's the haircut. Yeah, haircut. Yeah. That's what we have. Yeah. 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 Very good. That's okay, <laughs> are you? Trust you. There we go. Well, Heavy I'm glad you said that because when I started this podcast, I pretty much wanted to meet people who, I guess, game changers. Yeah. Who not only walk the walk, yeah, well, but hold on. talk the talk. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Changing the game. I like that. You are a good man. So, you can come uh, anytime. Yep. Thank you. So, look, I guess the best thing to start is, I guess, how you got in the industry and where it all, how it all began. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, it's a long story. No, I can condense this if I want to. Um, I started at 19. So I, when I started, I've always played football and cricket. Yep. So different to, um, uh, well, you're a rugby boy, rugby man, as yeah. I found out. Yes. As right. I found out. No, we'll talk, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I'm going to bring up the guy that Greg... Um, Greg's favourite player in, um, in rugby. We're going to bring that up later. I'll talk yeah. about that. Um, yeah, I started... Um, 19. Now, I actually, um, what people don't understand is, and it's, it's very annoying, not annoying, but it's just a, people just want to put like this, oh, you know, you've had everything easy, you know, you tra- you're train mm-hmm. athletes. You know, I didn't ha- this didn't happen overnight. This was actually um, an accumulation of years of 
of tireless effort, putting in the hours, mm. um, uh, and trying to. I'm never going to mark. No one can ever master this craft, but you can always look to get better. Yep. Um, I don't know everything. I don't uh, to pretend. I always even say this at my course. This is what we believe. There's many ways you can do something in this industry. There's no right. This is the whole issue with the industry. I could go on to you, but there's no black. Yeah. It's, not, it's not black or white. There's no right or wrong. There's many, ways many ex- oh, many many ways lead to Rome. So you know what I mean. So, yeah. Yeah. so I think I say in my course. I say, listen, there. Um, there's many ways you can do this. So um, my way is not the only way, and I understand this. So I paid my dues. I worked my way up. I started. I actually begged for my first position. Um, because as you know, they say uh, you need experience. Well, how the fuck can I get experience without having experience? Mm. Um, so I went to a local gym yeah. called Adam and Eve in Oakley. And I said to the woman, listen, if you give me a sh- all I'm asking for is a shot, right? I'm not asking you to pay at the start. I'm going to clean equipment. I'm going to help out with the members. So I didn't know yeah. anything. I just want to learn. Um, I just want, I honestly wanted to fucking learn. Just give me a shot. And uh, her name was Billy Parsons and she gave me my first shot. So I owed my career to her because I don't know like what I'll be without her because I it's either a big chain gym paying two hundred, two fifty three, you know how it is. Yeah, or go there. So I was lucky to do that. Okay. Um I started there at nineteen, then I went to Genesis. And then from there I started getting a passion for um uh, athletic development injury reduction. So I ended up uh got a year doing exercise science, so three years at uh, VU. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um I did an honors a degree in uh, neuroscience in exercise neuroscience under uh, Dr. Alan Pierce, who's actually doing all the research on concussion at the moment. Concussion's a big thing, mm-hmm. and then from there I started um, started understanding. I trained a cricketer who's um, was in uh, England's uh, like he was one of England's like his uh, like a, a, a I forgot in England what they call the cricketers. Um, it's like um, I can't remember exactly, but he was one of like the elite cricketer like um, through the pathway. Like development. Yeah, I was on a development. He was like a. Uh, County cricket, county cricket, okay. right? Oh, okay. So he came yeah. down the gym. That's where kind of I first got my taste of athletic development. Like I didn't make, it took me five, six years before I started being confident enough to train athletes. Started doing work experience with a lot of other junior elite and sub elite clubs. Mm-hmm. So um, I was at. Um, I'll get this out. I'll show you. If I'm off phone. I'll tell you exactly. Yeah. So what happened was I was at. I'll tell you exactly. All the viewers out there, so everyone understands this, so you can go through it. Um, I was actually at all these junior elite or sub elite or institute systems. So I'll tell you. So I started off. It's actually got it all here on my LinkedIn. So I started off at. I was a strength co- strength coach of the Oakley Chargers. So the Oakley Chargers and Tack Cup. I was there for one year under my mate who was the high performance manager. So I got a bit of experience there. Yep. And by the way, this is all free. Didn't get paid for one cent. Just let everyone know. Yeah. I was a fitness coach of the Melbourne Victory Youth Team for one year. Learned under. It was like a. I just put my hand up, I said, fuck it. Oh, I just want to get as much experience. I want to get my hands dirty. Mm-hmm. I want to learn as much as possible from different sports. Yep. Any time I've got a chance to put my hand up, I'll just do it. Yep. But it's my thought process. Just put yourself out there. Get some experience. Fitness coach Mel, uh, Mel Victory, because uh, the, the, uh, the physiologist, uh, physiology teacher was looking for me. I put my hand up. Yep. Head sports scientist of Vic, Vic Metro Soccer, National Carnival. I got paid $300 for a two-week carnival. That was the first time I ever got paid. I was a head strength conditioning coach at Black Rock Football Club, plus I play, so get some experience there and get paid a fair bit. Yeah. Uh, personal trainer, and I was a re- personal trainer rehab coach at uh, Genesis for like whatever, five, six, I think it's six, seven years. Okay. Uh, VIS, I was a, a Victorian Institute of Sport, I was a physical preparation coach as an intern for a year. Um, that was horrendous, I thought it was fucking shit house. <laughs> so I couldn't give a fuck really if you what you think about that if you're VIS, but they're terrible. Uh, just a shit system really, just uh, not good, no money in it, and they just backstab each other. And if mm-hmm. if a young kid like me was coming up, uh, they would belittle they they belittle the young guys just because they because there's no jobs. Yeah. So it's, it's just terrible violence. It's one guy in particular who belittled me, and uh, I'll get him back one day. So that doesn't matter. I'm always oh, looking at. Oh no no, no I'll get him back mentally. Oh you bring him back. When, when he I'll get his yeah. Well he didn't need to do it, and that's what bro. I told you this before. People are so insecure. Like, because there's no jobs and all they do is, I don't understand the whole thing because I'm a big personality and I'm yeah. confident. Um, he thought that like, I, I don't want your shitty fucking job champ. Like I don't, it's not, I make my, I crack my own thing. I crack my own brand. I don't need that shit. So. Well, I feel threatened or. That, that's yeah. threatened. That's it. Very yeah. smart and threatened. So I uh, just, yeah. te- not a good environment, bro. Not a good, I backstairs. I'm not going to go, everyone bang each other. Fuck that yeah, shit. I see yeah, it. No, good. Uh, S&C coach. Now, this is, before I went to America, I want to learn about, more about um, uh, gridiron, American football. Yep. I was strength and conditioning coach for the, the state team, uh, Victorian Eagles gridiron team, the state team. Mm-hmm. I was the assistant strength and conditioning coach, strength and conditioning coach for gridiron Australia, so I went with some gridiron Australia players. Then I went, and then my biggest thing was going to Maryland University, which was a Div 1 college. 
that changed my life, man, because I saw how shit we were in yeah. terms of the private sector, what level we need to be at, and uh, that's kind of where Woodford all started from, my friend. Well, I'm glad you brought up, Marilyn, because we are actually going to be talking about that. How that many questions do you have for me? I'll tell you where we're going. Uh, I wouldn't say I have too many. You're very organised, aren't you? Because yeah, I wouldn't... Uh, to, yeah, you're very organised. For a man like yourself, you need a... Yeah, <laughs> fucking very organised. Yep. <laughs> okay, great. Well... Uh, well, I guess you kind of did talk about the challenges, but yep. what would you, I guess, say was the biggest one? Uh, biggest guess, challenge? Yes, yeah, so it's getting where we're here now. Oh, just, I'll be honest, I want to quit. I want to quit so many times. I'll be honest, I lost my passion for it. Yeah. My thing was, I completely lost my passion for it. Do you know what I did? I lost my passion when I was at Genesis and I was training people who didn't give a fuck. But what I mean by that is, when I say you don't give a fuck, they'll rock up, but they think they'll know better. They wouldn't listen to you. They yeah. they kind of disrespected us as as professionals. Yeah. Um, and they called you a little. They, oh, this this word still does my fucking head. Is oh, you're a personal trainer. Like disres demeaning us in some way, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you know the demeaning of that? Like that that burnt me for years, man. It's like fuck Absolutely. you, motherfucker. Like who the fuck are you to say this to us? I love this man. This is a fucking good profession. Yeah. We get spat on consistently, right? Hey. And with good reason, there's some dickheads. Hey, good reason. Because our, yeah. our industry's a basket case, right? But how fucking dare you spit on something I fucking love, right? And obviously, I get fired up. Of course I do, because there's guys like you who are really, you know, want to, mm. you know, you care. I can see you come down, you look at all these notes. You know, you show respect, you know? So it just hurts me, man. It hurt me for years, bro. I'll be honest. Half the reason I did this is because I did it for the good people, the good in the industry, like yourself. And yeah. do you understand what I'm saying? That, that burnt me, like, in here. And look, I'll be honest with you. If you were to say it now, I'd fucking destroy you. And when I say destroy you, I'd probably go on a rant for a good... And a rant, when I go on a rant, and, I, and you can ask the J, my 2IC, and Jace, it's very hard to stop me. I reckon half the time just say, just let him go. Because you don't disrespect people who really love what they do. Yeah. But in this industry, we get pissed on by people who kind of think that everyone's like that just because of a, fit, a small few. Ah, yeah. exactly, yes. Yeah. And that my thing is, no. It, we have, think about this. You have one body, right? Mm -hmm. One body. One fucking body, yet we think that it's okay that not to learn more about anatomy, physiology, uh, uh, biomechanics, programming, coaching. One body. You can seriously fuck your body up if you don't hire the right professional, yet yeah. we think it's okay to hire idiots on social media who might look good, take a good photo, dump mm. their image, take external supplements, steroids, and then you think that just because they look that way, that gives them the knowledge, the professionalism to call themselves a trainer or a coach. Yeah. Fuck off. No, that's not right. And these people use the industry and they fuck up the rest of us. And I'm sick of it. And it burns me consistently and I will not stop. I will, and the minute that fire leaves here, yeah. I will quit. quit. Because I will not be in something I do not love. I've never done it. I never will. I, and that's what happened was at Genesis. The biggest thing for me, you asked me the challenge, yeah. was sticking at it. It's hard. Yeah. You think you're going to make... People think they, they, they finish set three and four. I make a hundred grand. No, you are not. Yeah, yeah. You are not. Yeah. Please don't think that. And no. I, I, I want to set three and four, right? Everyone set three and four. Um, if you want to get in contact, uh, understand more about it, go to uh, woodfordssc.com because the boys deal with it, not me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you something. You want to say to them? Yeah. If you fucking think that, get the fuck out. I don't think... I tell people, I personally, I'm pretty much a, not an arsehole, but I don't care about it. If you want to do it mm. with... Ours is... Um, it's not even expensive compared to some other ones, but ours is... It, um, what I say is um, we price it where we want the real people to learn, right? Yeah. I'll be honest with you, we get so many fucking leads and everyone pulls out for the price. I do not give a fuck. If you don't want to come in for price, if, you're, if you don't want to invest in your career, I've been investing a half a million dollars, right? If you don't invest, you should not be in this industry, right? Yeah. You shouldn't be in this industry. If you don't want to invest in your own career, that's how I got better because I invested. I go to America every second year, every year to learn to get better. Like putting I, in hours, exactly. Putting in time. Exactly. Yeah. That, but that's how you get better to knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Where other people think of it differently, it's like, I'd rather really learn more about marketing, which, yeah, that's one facet. But if you're more worried about marketing than getting results to your client, you're never going to go anywhere. That's the issue with this industry. So my thing, you asked me my biggest challenge, was to, I'm so, as you can see, so passionate yeah. about what yeah. I do and how much I love this industry mm. and how much I want to help develop it. And my personality is, the reason why I like this is because I really love and want, I get more satisfaction out of watching other people develop. I promote my, my good mate around the corner, Melbourne Drink Culture, Jamie Smith. Yeah. Shout out to him. I promote them. But if people want to get me on, because I, I, that's just my passion, because I'm aggressive, because that's all I've always been. It's like me, my passion. I'm you cannot change the status quo unless you're willing to actually come out and say something about it. I'm willing to do it. I'm not, 
And for yeah. me, I don't care about, I told you, I don't care yeah, if you like, and you have to have someone like that. You, you have yeah. to ask, too many people care about what people think, I just don't give a fuck. I just, I live a life that's so cool, like I just don't care. I walk down the street and these days, like, well, mate, when I was 25, when I started, maybe a little bit I cared. The minute I stopped caring was pretty much the day I just became very successful, it's like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, the hardest thing is just stick at it. Stick at it. I watch all these unpassionate people come in try, and, and try and make a quick buck and move out. Yeah, come and go, yeah. Oh, and I'll be, I'll be honest, I've had a kid yeah. sit here and he said this and they came out. I said, listen, what, what do you want to do? And he said this to me and this is the worst thing you can say to me. Oh, I think I want to do it part time and then do you know, a proper job. I said, what? He should have said that, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I told him. I, well, I told him, I said, get the fuck out. I said, yeah. this is my property, get the fuck out. Um, and maybe you fucking showed me some respect that I've done, and I've tried to build up, so fuck off. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. I'm pretty much it, man. And that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking up. I'm, I feel I'm the voice, and you might not like this, everyone, and if you don't, yeah. stick it up your ass, because I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say things that you're not. That's how it is. And I've built a profile of that because I really give a fuck. I will sacrifice my own fucking up. Oh, this might sound a bit crazy, it probably is. Yeah. But I will sacrifice my own life if I know that I could. This is what, and if you read my shit, I told you about legacy, right? Mm. Legacy is not about how much money you make; it's how many lives you can change. Yeah. If I can leave this industry in a better state than I found it, that's my legacy. So I'm going to sacrifice my own life. If someone came with a genie in the bottle, and he said I could make this industry the best industry you ever dreamt of, but unfortunately, you'd have to be a sacrifice. Would I do it? Yeah, hundred percent. Because fucking, that's what life's about. Life's about going after your dreams. I don't know, but I'm not married, don't have any kids. Yeah. Now, if I had kids, it'd probably be a bit different, yeah. but I might have a few that I don't know of. You never know, you never know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, yeah. for me, do you understand what I'm saying is, I love this industry. That was my, um, if you have a vision in life, mm. and we talk about, I, I talk about to a lot of my guys, is finding your why. What makes you want to wake up every day and that burning fight in here? I'm being serious, find yeah. it. But so many people go through life unhappy with their job, then fucking quit. Yeah. Don't have to work, they're not fucking put a gun in your fucking head. Yeah. Do something with love and passion. And if you're authentic, people like you. Mm. This is who I am. I'm not pretending to be someone else. You see fakes a mile away. I see it all the time. This is who I am as a person. I love what I do. I'm passionate. I just want I just want to help. Mm. And my thing is I will not ever look back at my life and want to want you. Because people have regrets. Oh, I could have, yeah. should have, would have. No, you didn't do it, move on. I'm yeah, not going to yeah. be one of those people. I'm going to do everything I, I said I, I plan to do. I told everyone uh, seven years ago on September 14th this year, September 13th or 14th. Yeah. Yes, September 13th, 2012. I said seven years ago in September 13th to this year that I, what I would do, I'll change the game, look back at my previous videos. Everything I said, I backed up. I keep backing yeah. up. I keep backing up. There's nothing yeah. you can say. People hate on me at the start. These days I get a lot of love, which is a bit weird because I got to hate the start. So it's cool to yeah. watch guys like you come through and mm. say that. I appreciate it. So it's a bit weird. Well, but glad you brought that up because one thing I actually listened to some of your old, like some things in 2012, and yeah. you mentioned yourself being a bit like the Batman and the industry. Well, yes. And that was the. Yeah. Actually, it's funny you say that because yeah, I, the, there's, that a clip, there's a there clip. There's a clip. Yeah. So I said, I said that uh, what I felt like was every day I woke up. Yeah. I was scared. So someone said, "Were you scared?" Fuck yeah, I was scared, man. Do you understand at the time, man? I went after, the, the thing was, at the time I was angry, I felt CrossFit was the latest craze, like the yeah. big, you know, the, the, yeah. the ebbs and flows. Now, CrossFit's a sport now, which is fantastic. Hey, you want to do CrossFit? All well to you, yeah. Do what the fuck you want, I don't give a shit. But, here's the thing, do not, do not make stupid ac accusations that CrossFit used to say, we, 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 you know, we can, um, uh, we develop athletes, all this shit. It's like, I'm sitting here going on. I've given up my whole fucking life for this and these guys are going to say that and I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to tell you. That was the day I took a stand. I looked at and I yeah. used, to, used to look at myself in the mirror and say, I am vigilant, Batman was a vigilante, right? Yeah. Even though I'm not wearing a cape or anything, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to, every day I woke up and I said, I'm Christian Woodford, I'm going to change the album. I used to always say that. And if, it's called affirmations, it's called visualisation, yeah. it's called fucking, I dreamt everything. You might not believe this, mm -hmm. but I literally have manifested my dreams of reality. I dreamt of everything. I dreamt of trained professional athletes, semi-pro, amateur, week and warrior. I created, I, I, I literally manifested literally everything, professional jerseys all around my um, centre. I literally manifested um, being a world leader, Australian leader, coming out and saying things that no one, I, I honestly dreamt that before it happened. Yeah. So if you ever read the book, um, uh, uh, the Secret by Rondus, whatever, read it because I actually honestly believe that 100%. Yeah. I, I visualize everything before it happens and uh, it's happened. So people say, How do you feel about it? I said, Well, fuck, next goal. So that's, yeah, no, that was uh, back then I believed in it and I still believe in it today. So.
2012 seems like a long time. It was probably 2014. Long time ago, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I'm, thir- I'm an old man though. I'm 33 in October, but I feel I feel um, it is draining though. Like it is draining how I am because it's me. But uh, mm. I love I love what I do. I still love it. That's it. But people. I talked to you about the, the, the passion there. Why people just lose passion in the yeah. I guess they make me, they find again a little. A lot of people get real. I don't actually like that when people say that you reignited my passion. Like I get so many messages from not just Australia these days, the world. That's what I knew I was, I was reading it. I think DeFranco would have helped a lot. Obviously, yeah, he's got a big he's thing. A but, big, yeah, yeah but he's a big thing. So, um, but it, man, from the world saying you inspire me to do this, that. I think he described as the most passionate person or coach. Yeah, he's so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so everyone out there, if you don't know, so this is um, so he was my idol. So looking back at it, in Australia, you do sports science, but there's the other guy. There was only one way pro sport, and there was minimal jobs. And I thought I never want to go pro sport. I always want to create my own um, uh, brand. And what happened was, oh excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on, that's right. No, no, okay, thank God. Now, <laughs> so if you look here, I want to thank Mr. Decranus yeah, as well. Right, so put up here. So the guy now, my right, your left. I'm correct in saying that is Joe and I on his podcast. Mm. Check it out. Maybe do you have show notes or anything or no? Do you put show notes on here or? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we're actually <laughs> going to talk about Joe. So oh, you are okay. So Joe on here. Maybe ta- maybe you can tag him as well. Tag yeah. him. So Joe, here's my idol. Uh, there I am um, on his show. So I, by the way, I dreamt of this before it even happened. And if you want me to explain, I'll explain when it comes how I got on it. Mm. And there's Chris DeCras and I, young DeCras, who I rehab from an ACL, and he's the most passionate kid I've ever met. This and see, his mother came up to me at New Year's and said, "Thank you for." Um, what you've done to my son. So I want to really show, um, I think it was episode 194, Industrial Strength Coach, unbelievable. The best coach. When you do exercise science in Australia, there's no light at the end of the tunnel because it's like pro sport or nothing. Yep. I said, I don't want to do that. I want to work in the private sector, but I want to develop athletic development. Mm. And so many people said it can't be done. There's no industry. There's no industry. There's no industry. I kept hearing the same bullshit. And I used to always say, well, fuck it. Everyone had that same fucking attitude. Nothing get done. Nothing get done. Why can't done. someone just say, fuck it, I'll be the man. I'll fucking do it. I waited so fucking long. I said, one day I woke up and I'm like, fuck it, I'll do it myself. Yeah, and yeah. I just did it. And you know what that, that, that shows? Yeah. Take fucking accountability. Don't wait for someone to fucking do it. Successful people take immediate action. I said, fuck this shit, I'm going to do it myself. And I did it. And yeah. there's living proof. Don't fucking wait. Take it by the balls and do it yeah. yourself. The minute you fucking let someone else do it, I could have waited. But you know what? I said to myself, and people always get, you know what? You're your haters and lovers. Who gives a fuck? I said to myself, you know what? I said, I'm going to do it myself. You're going to like me, hate me, fuck it. That's when I became successful because I always used to care what people thought. Yeah. And I said, one day I went out, fuck it, I'll do it myself. And hey, this is what we are. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, you know what? I'm living my dream every day. Is it, does it frustrate me some days? Yeah. I said, it's not perfect. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to people, but I have good people like you, smart, educated, private school people, which Brick was, you know, uh, if you watch one of these, Brick, you know Brick? Yeah. <laughs> Brick's a private school boy, right? This is for Brick. And he goes to Irving Newton College. So I, I just mm. give him shit. It just, it's just a pro, I give anyone shit who goes to private school, but Brick is my favourite mm. because he always did. But what kind of private school goes from prep to year 12? Did you go to private school? That was, yeah, I was one of those. Oh, Brick, you two have got to meet then. Jesus Christ. We're going to the house. Oh, he's a guy. He's, you know what? He's, he's brilliant. He, I give him <laughs> shit, but he, um, he's, his work ethic's really good. He know, He's a great kid. He, um, mm. Oh, fantastic. He's brilliant. He, um, he's the heart of uh, Woodford. He's not, it's actually all the days you come, he's not here on a Thursday. Out of all the yeah. days, he's here every other day. Okay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday morning sometimes. He's just a brilliant person and that. Uh, I'm so glad I hired him. It was just, and I think if you watch the videos and ask Woodford, um, people message me and they say you're, you give me hope because you hired a guy that looks in the in our industry it's all about looks. It's not about your substance. Correct. But I hired but Brick based on his heart and his passion, and he really cares and yeah. his substance. And people go respect to you because you know a lot of people know him because of looks like and that's nothing against Brick but that's you know what he's a strong as hell dude I mean mm. God, God's strong but do you understand what I'm saying people yeah. but I, did, I don't give a fuck I don't care he's, he's great he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good person and that's all I care about he's, he's a great coach he's getting better so shout out to you Bristol. Brick yeah. Brick both of you two are weird though prep for you look at you two <laughs> prep for you 12 Jesus Christ that's it now, actually, now I guess we did talk about America, but I yep. want to particularly focus on your experience at the Maryland University. Yep. So, can you first talk about how that opportunity came about? Yep. 
uh, I guess your experience. Because, um, yeah. yeah, I guess one of the big things I've picked up, yeah. I guess, since following you is that. Yeah. How long have you followed us for and myself for? For a number of years now. Yeah. yeah. What? But where, did you did you follow because of Shandle or what? Like? I guess I pay more, not I pay more attention, but I yeah. really follow the channel. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, obviously being in the industry, you yeah. follow. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I guess the big thing I follow and got out is I noticed a lot of the things from America, particularly I guess the college system. Yeah. You've taken, I guess. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I guess that in terms of that, how you, so I guess like, how did it all first start? Like how did yeah. you get to Maryland? Yeah. Um, because you're an assistant strength conditioning coach. Yeah. So, so what happened was I was at VIS. I told you, and I hated. I was just done, man. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, yeah, man. I'll be completely honest. I was, fuck, man. I reckon, I reckon that that even killed me more because I started going, this is fucked. I started going, there's no jobs. No one really get like there, there was no real. No, the athletes don't buy into it here because yeah. it, our mainstream sports is not. It's an endurance. They people think it's endurance based sport, running, you know, football, running before you got to run, you got to run. So I was kind of done after being. I'll be honest, I was really done, man. I was, I don't know, I was just depressed. I really loved. Yeah. I knew there was something out there, right? And it just turns out. This is how life works when you when you open yourself up. Yeah. Um, what happened was um, there's a water pipe player that I was taking, and he said, "Why don't you go to the collegiate system?" So I started looking into it, and what happened was I made a short list of um, Div One teams. And if you're ever going to go to America, I just I had a passion and a love for neuromuscular adaptation training, neurological adaptation, strength training. Yeah. Uh, but also um, how to develop strength, power, speed. And if you look at any A lactate sport, the biggest A lactate ATP, what do I mean ATP PC sport. <laughs> is gridiron so American football they call it so I said I want to learn off these guys they're the best at it yeah. the whole system the process was um, literally I literally went for so many u- uh, unis and colleges so u- unis and colleges but I literally um, heard back from probably I went for 100 and I heard back from maybe 20 out of those 20 maybe 5 were interested out of those 5 3 were really interested out of those 3 1 was really interested in it. and I put all my eggs in my basket that was Maryland yep. and uh, I got there um, I got an internship there which is hard to do because why would they take us when there's so many other Americans that have a job so yeah. I went there uh, I was there for four three and a bit months okay so it was a big considerable time oh yeah god yeah, yeah it was a long yeah. time but I, I, yeah, it was unbelievable the best time of my life I just had I was exposed to such high level coaching I was actually I coached um this is all self-funded. Yeah, God, so yeah, didn't get paid. No, didn't get paid. You got to sell it. No, that's yeah. something we're talking about investing. I invested. Yeah. yeah, no, I didn't. No, self-funded. God, yeah, self-funded. You don't get no. These these kids these days expect fucking put their hand. You're a fucking idiot. You know what? What? What is your point of difference? I'm what point? At least that was my point of difference, man. Just yeah. going over there. And now uh, what happened was, second week, third week, I was in, and the head guy came up to me, uh, Coach Wilson, and he said, um, "You can coach because you're good enough, you know, to 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 be here." Mm. Um, you got to start blaming yourself. You can do this, and I was like, "Holy shit, I can roll with these guys!" And I remember we had an NFL player, Donald Brown, who was at, at the time in the Indian, played for the Indianapolis Colts. Yep. And I took him through a, I, 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 the whole like for three, four days. I was taking through speed work, mechanics, and lifting. And mm. he was like, "You're really good, man, coach. You, know, you got a background, your knowledge, and your application. You're good." And I was like, "Holy oh, fuck, man! These guys on these guys on what a few million. I'm fucking rolling with them. You know, I can do anything here." And that's kind of. I built up and then that's the conference and then I was yeah. I was like having the responsibility of coaching alignment and rehabbing and I just built from there it's just, listen it's, it's <coughs> putting yourself out there be willing to cop criticism to get better and don't be afraid of failure like failure isn't a bad thing that's how you learn don't even think of it as failure learn, think of it as a learning experience mm. and investing of course as well so I was, I was I'm blessed I still talk to all the all the string staff down there, even though they're so still got quite a relationship. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to Iowa. I went to Iowa with Alex Montmedia guy, and yeah. we saw Alan, Alan, Alan Weber, <laughs> who was the guy who got me over there, and I uh, went to Iowa. So Coach Doyle, Coach Doyle's the highest paid S and C coach, I think, on eight hundred thousand in the uh, American okay. system. Yeah, something. Di- oh, a million, a million or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So talked to him. It was real good uh, to talk to their string staff, and yeah, just talked about their program, what they do. So yeah, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay, so obviously you went there, obviously you obviously learnt, learnt a lot. Yep. And was it then that's when you decided you wanted to start your own, uh, your own thing or had that well, already had started or? Listen, man, uh, Wood, the Woodford Sports, the name I made up within five seconds was a round thing, I just went with it. Um, but I had an option to stay there and keep going with it. Yep. Not at Maryland, but I, I could have stayed there. I would have come back on another three minutes and gone, I would have just gone somewhere else yeah. and done another internship. I would have kept going until I got a job. Um, and prove my worth, um, but I got offered a few things, and then what happened was, I said to myself, "Well, I can either stay there, but at some stage you're going to come back. It's my home country, I love it. Yeah. But 
no, but there's no, there's no market in the private sector. And I said, well, hold on a second. Joe DeFranco was the guy who really pioneered the, the, the warehouse athlete development gym. Yeah. Why can't I do it? Why can't I be the guy to change the game in Australia? And that means the change of the game. Yeah. Why can't I educate through my passion, my love for what I do, my personality, and come out and say things that got people aren't willing to say and really expose? Like it, at the time, there's no Instagram, there's no Twitter, there's nothing. Like in 2012, bro, it was just Facebook. I'm pretty sure. And um, yeah, about right. Yeah, it was. And um, it was just starting to boom. And what happened was. You didn't have to pay for it. So I got in the days before you had to pay for it. Just, I think, three months beforehand, four months beforehand. So what happened was I kind of found there was a niche in the market because at, think about how many people play sport in Australia. A lot. Yeah. Think about how many people train properly. Not many. Think about how many people actually got proper training advice via social media about non strength sport training. Yeah. Not many. No one's doing it. Now, I looked at Joe Franco and I thought, hold on a second, he's doing it in America. There must be a market here. Mm-hmm. I remember coming out and doing all these things and saying all this stuff and it just blew up. Yeah. Like I went from uh, a no name to within a name within, I, I, remember, I remember people talking about me from all, like people saying to me and my mates going, fuck, I know this guy in Western Australia who was talking about you. Like I, this was in six months. Within six months I went from zero, mm. a guy who had nothing to ever, and, and I never believed, like people say, do you have this confidence? Well, no, I never, I was never like this. And then all, as I said, the day that changed me was, I have to start believing myself because if I don't believe myself, no one else will. will, What's the point? I'm just going around fucking circles. I have a degree, I've got an honours, heaps of experience, I've paid my dues, now's my time. Now's my time, let's go, let's roll, let's do it. So I was 25, I had to make the chance. Do I go this way and do I regret my life for the rest of my life or do I say, fuck it, let's go all in here, fuck this shit. I said, this is is what makes me successful, I believe, is my ability to just go, fuck it, and not give, like literally now it's like, I've done it. I've been doing this so long now, I guess like I've just kind of, I don't know, I'm only 30, you gotta realize I'm, I'm seven years I've been in business, now I know business experience, I've grown up in this business, yeah. um, uh, I'm, only, I'm only 33 this year, what I've achieved in seven with a business and myself in seven years, it, it's a lot, so imagine when I'm 40, like mm-hmm. the world's my oyster, I believe that within seven years time, so what, what seven, I'm 33, another seven years I'm 40, I believe it'll be the biggest name, one of the biggest names in the world. Well, I've put I, and my dream was to put Australia on the map so more people know that. Yeah. But look, but look at look at how many performances that have popped up now. Dude, you ever fucking doing? Yeah. Before we started, before, and I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I was the first to do it in Australia because there were people like um uh, Core Advantage, Darren McInnes, shout out to him. He he was doing, it, but he was doing that at like a, a, a sub leasing, right? Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I was the first to heavily market and promote it. That's the big thing. The Mate, fucking yeah. huge. And if you don't. The thing what people don't understand is about it, I've openly admitted this, people kind of, like, once again, it's just me how I say it, but mm. people are just so insecure, they'll check, get over it, I'm, like, if you, like, I understand, like, if you're so insecure about it, do it yourself then. Yeah. If you think you're better than me, people say this, I do what he does. Go out and do what I've done. Go, go put yourself out there, go, go, I'm so transparent with everything. I'm an easy target, right? Yeah. Go fucking show us what you do. Go film, go film yourself, go talk, do something in the fucking industry. My thing was, if you come out and express it with such passion and you educate, people are going to like you. And yeah. then what happens? Everyone wins. Do you know why? More people know about proper education based training, right? At the time, no one was coming out with it. So what I thought was, if I come out with it and I educate with my passion and I actually care, yeah. more people know what a good coach trainer was. That's what I thought. And what you said is right. The marketing side is a big part. The education side is a big part. At the time, no one was coming out with educational videos on not... You'd see a video of a fucking street sport athlete lifting 100 loads. It's like, how the fuck can anyone use that? Right? That's great, but that's a power lifter. That's a street sport athlete. For me, no one was giving high quality educational social media advice for the non street sport athlete. Yeah. And I, when, yeah. I, when I started, fuck me, you got cop hate. But when you're the first person to do it, you get the hate, but then you get fucking up. If you can you stick at it, you, you get, get the love. love. And hey, yep. I, I get more love than I hate, but I personally get bored of it. I have people starting to fight with me, so it's funny. Mm. So I don't really take this. Once again, I, you, someone's opinion on me on social media of my methods, it doesn't affect me because I know my results work for my athletes. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Stop caring what other people think because if you live your whole life caring what other people think, that's your, like, it, that, that, that's... If you honestly do that, you're fucked. So you need to harden the fuck up, and if you want to contribute to this industry, push out high level content. But you see how many, do you see how many performances yeah. there are now? We were the we were the catalyst for it. I'm proud to say that we were the catalyst. We were number one catalyst. Uh, we are the original. We are the best. Regardless of what anyone says now, 
I was serious. I was the one who paid the pump. I, and you can love me or hate me for that. I paid the pump. I put my balls on the line. And I was willing to do that. So you fucking, you can hate me, love me. I don't give a fuck, but I deserve respect for that. And even, that's even, even people don't like me say that. Yeah. And even, listen, you can, and that's, I don't want, and I don't give a fuck. You don't have to like me. I don't care about that. If you want to hate, that's cool, but you have to respect what I've done because I paid the pump for that. In Australia. In yeah. Australia. If no one's doing it, I want to do it. And when you get your neck chopped, I mean, I did, but once again, nothing can, there's nothing, anything anyone can say that will affect me. Nothing, nothing really affects me. Even if you said, because they don't know me, they don't, you know, they don't know you either. Yeah. They don't know context, they don't know that client, that athlete, that, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People take it, like, so personally. Well, that's the big thing, yeah. Personally, like, I told you, what, they personally, I just stare people up. I'll be honest, I laugh. Yeah. I, I, I love, for you, like, you see, you see videos of me when I'm doing it, I smile the whole time. I love pissing people off. I was at, um, uh, you know, I don't know if you're the AFL, I was like a tagger. So when I played football, and my job was just getting their face the whole time. And I've, <laughs> but I've read the article. I, I actually, um, I view social media as a, as a chess game. I just love it. If I, if I annoy you, I have a personal reason. No, not a personal, I have a reason to do it. Reason, yeah. So if I, I, um, yeah, I could explain this more, but I won't. Listen, listen mm. everything I do, you might not think I had method, but I do. And, you, and I think you've worked this out now. I'm actually, yeah. people, people think that I just do things off the cut. No, everything's, everything's planned. Pre-planned in my head. But... And, uh, it might be prepaid, like it might be not prepaid for a long time, but it might be prepaid for at least a week. Mm. Um, I have things planned out in my head. Like I planned everything in terms of woodfordshop.com, all our products, all that stuff, I planned that. Yeah. Um, Jay, with, along with Jay and my team, um, we've structured that, we have reason behind it, we know where we're going, our vision. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's reason behind I do it. Um, a lot of people just get too upset when it's their bias. Yeah. Like I've told you before, like um, everyone has a training bias, just move on. Like if, if, if you can't get to the the fuck, I don't, it is what it is. Some people just like, for me, I just like, oh, well, that's his choice. I remember a lot of people have cracks at me. I don't fucking write, oh, you wrote it up. That's cool. I don't, just, yeah. If you don't like me, I'm not going to sit there cry. I'll just laugh. I think it's great. Yeah. I'd rather people not like me because I stir the shit out of people and I'm just laughing. I just I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. People just get, I'll tell you what it is, man. Society today, of people want instant gratification. People don't want to work. And when you see someone mm -hmm. who's hungry, who's very, very loud, very out there, yeah. this is my personality. And that's fine if you're introverted. That's fine. Like, Mm. I can love with. I can talk to anyone. I'm not, I'm a good person. Um, uh, just I just love what I do, man. This is my my passion. I've just found my passion. Like yourself, you know, you you know, you found your passion. Yeah. I think that's good. And anyone who's willing to go out there, and put yourself out there, and, and talk your passion, mm. that's the most important thing. So I think that's that's the thing that I really like is meeting like-minded individuals. And mm -hmm. so they're they would made a network. So finding out about you and finding out about who you like, you know, in terms of your, your, your sandal and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah. uh, we should we should mention this. So uh, we're talking before and um, well, you can explain this. Go explain this. Well, Shandorel. Well, we'll go explain Shandorel. Who's your favourite player? Oh, so yeah, favourite rugby league player, Shandorel. So when he, uh, so he played a few clubs, but he... Few, I think four or five, wasn't it? Four? Yeah, so before he came to the Raiders, so he was at the Penrith Panthers. I think even before that, he may have been at the Roosters for a little stint. This yeah. was in the 20... No, were you younger? Um, yeah, so obviously he signed for the Canberra's and he um, formed a very good combination with Blake Ferguson. Who's know. Blake Ferguson? Oh, uh, was that a... No mate? idea. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, they had a really good run, the Raiders, in 2012, so they... Well, pretty close to the prelim finals. Was, was Shandor playing? So Shandor was playing. He was starting? He was starting, yeah. So he wasn't playing the twos? So he, was the, he wasn't the two, he was a one. Ooh, was it two? So uh, this is when he was on the wings. So they had Ferguson on the uh, on the inside. Was Ferguson sense. still playing? Uh, he was, yeah. So he's, still, he's now at the Paramount Reels. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, but he, again, Ferguson and Shandor, again, played a few clubs. have kind of... Yeah. But, journeymen, um, we called them. The old yeah, journey. journeymen. So we had a good little run and that. And, um, yeah, like... Liked him instantly. I mean, my, I don't know, was it tattoos or the? Cool. Yeah. No, probably wasn't tattoos. I haven't got one, but Jesus. he um yeah, so obviously followed him a fair bit. Yeah. And, He's your uh, favourite player, to be honest. He was my favourite player. Yeah. Well, how can you how can you favourite player be playing the twos, bro? <laughs> yeah, that was a bit weird. You know what I mean? No, I just let you know twos and twos. Yeah, Shannon. No, look, Shannon's a great guy. Yeah. Shannon, listen, he um. Yeah, good story. Uh, listen, I, as I said, I'm not an NRL guy. Mm. Um, he's a great guy, though. Um, and uh, as I said to you before, he uh, he deserves everything he gets. He's a hard worker, um, and he, he's just a he's a terrific human being. So I uh, look, I respect him. He's just mm. a bit of a dick to me sometimes. So yeah. I hate that video about that too. Isn't that two thirty pool video, the deadlift video? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? You haven't seen it? This trap bar one? No, no. no. I'll show it to you afterwards. He's an asshole. He beat me. He beat my two. I'm going to do a 220, on a trap bar, I think. No, no, no. This is another one. I'll show you afterwards. You can see it afterwards. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's just him being an asshole, pretty much. It's rubbing it in. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You'll see it. I'll show you afterwards. I wasn't happy. I was crying. I was crying. Now, speaking of people, actually, because we spoke about Joe DeFranco, so yeah. I guess for anyone who those who don't know, he's probably one of the, uh, I guess one of the biggest names, I suppose, in the sort of strength yeah. conditioning field. I think, yeah, I think he, he, and, uh, he's, yeah, he's the biggest SNC coach. Yeah, yeah, and um, so, as you said, he's obviously a very big idol of yours. Yeah. Can you, firstly, I guess, talk about the experience, how you got on the show? Because we <laughs> talked about that was a big thing. Yeah. And... The um, I believe you also had a bet with him as well but, uh, about whether he yeah. could get him here for to work for, for free. Well, we tried. Yeah, we tried it. So what happened was, yeah. oh, Joe, listen, Joe's a he's a good he's a great guy. So what happened was, um, I fight Joe Franco since like twenty years old, man. Since I started. Yeah. So you got to understand, this guy's my fucking idol. And Smitty Diesel. Well, Smitty, yes, yeah, Smitty. He's a good man, Diesel. So, yeah. So. You met him. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. went to his course. So, what, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. I, man, I keep telling you about investing. There's a common theme around this. They yeah. say success leaves clues. You could see the investing part yeah. of your career. Start, start yeah. investing in your career. Yeah. Start going to workshops. Start going to guys who know what the fuck they're doing. And maybe instead of fucking being average, you might be even better. You might be one of the, the, the 5 10% that actually yeah, do quite yeah. well. It's true. And um, what happened was we, um, I think um, uh, I went to his uh, S- 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 CPPS. Certified Physical Preparation Specialist course over in uh, Texas when he was in Texas. Mm. And what happened was, um, uh, I went with Jay, my 2IC, and then, um, man, I'll be honest you, I actually first got in contact with Joe probably two years beforehand, right? Mm. And I had to tell him my story. Joe didn't have Facebook back then. He didn't even have Instagram because Instagram wasn't even big back, back, back then. So what I did was, <coughs> I messaged his wife. Um, Ashley DeFranco, shout out to Ashley. Mm. And I messaged the whole thing and he said, I didn't think I'd get anything back. I was like, fuck it, I'll just tell Ashley. I, I didn't even know if it was her because she just looks like some Jersey woman. I said, fuck it, this will be the woman. Um, I messaged her this fucking full long thing about Joe and what he's done for my life and she posted it. She posted it. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty full on, man. It's pretty cool. And um, then Joe wrote back and said, let's stay in contact, brother. And that's how it kind of started. And then I went to his course over in Texas. I said, I'm going to make this bloke. Yeah. I don't even fuck what I have to pay. I need to meet him to tell this guy this guy changed my life. Without him, it wouldn't happen. Wouldn't would happen. This would not happen. We would not be talking about him. So, mm. what happened was, I went there and I was so nervous, bro. I, I don't get nervous much, but mm. he, I just got so fucking nervous. I was just fucking shaking. What happened was, I walked up to him. This is after. This is at lunch, and I said, "Joe, I'm the guy who messaged your wife." Think <laughs> about you know how awkward that is, man. I'm thinking, Jesus fucking Christ. And thank God it's Joe, and he goes, "Oh, Christian, you're yeah, straight." And then, yeah, connected. And then from there, <laughs> fucking weird, I don't need. Anyway, we stayed in contact, yeah. and we still, we stayed in contact, and then what happened was, <coughs> I remember that early days, he had that podcast, and I turned, mm-hmm. and I said to Jay, I'm going to be on this podcast one day, I'm going to make it my mission to be on this podcast. Yeah. So what happened was, Alex, by chance, was over at his course, we said, go, he's course, our media guy, and he said, Chris is not knowing you've asked me this, but would you let him on your show? And then Joe turns to him and goes, yeah, if you came over here, I'll do it. Now, Joe doesn't understand that if I, if you tell me that, I'll be the next player. No, that's yeah. how I am. Yeah, Successful yeah, yeah. Take, people take immediate action. Yeah. What happened was the very next day, I said, fuck, I'm going to take this off. Oh, tune, I can't miss this. this. This is my dream. I'm not going to let my dream sit by. I'm not gonna, I want to look back my life so I did this. Yeah, yeah. So we did this social media thing to tag Joe DeFranco and get Christian Wood for like, his first Australian on his show. Go to his show. Yeah. He had five or oh, something ridiculous tags. He couldn't, he couldn't not, he couldn't let it keep going. So he yeah. said, yep, come. Yeah. So I said, all right, within two weeks, booked a flight, went over there. I think, no, a month, month, we came on the booked it. We actually uh, filmed the whole thing. It was unbelievable. Went over there, filmed it, longest episode ever, the best episode ever. He called me in Australia, he's the most, oh, the most passionate coach he's ever met. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty uh, overwhelming to think how many guys he's met. And so to get that from him is pretty, yeah, um, yeah fucking unbelievable. So um, fantastic person, fantastic individual. Uh, he's just an, he's an idol. When you, sometimes if you ever meet an idol, you're like, he's got a fuck weird. No, he's a legend, just a legend. Uh, he'll go down as probably the, in my opinion, the greatest. Him and I mean, he, he is the greatest of all time. And when I want to say the GOAT, I mean that he's the GOAT. Of, he changed the game of the whole 
um, and Boyle, they, they really pioneered it. What I mean, yeah. pioneered that, and yeah. they pioneered it so other people around the world and America could actually make a living off coaching athletes in the private sector. Where before it was unheard of, where you had your machine body, but fuck that shit. No, no, don't do that. For me, I wanted to do this, this is my passion and love. Um, and uh, he was the guy who showed me the light in the tunnel. So without Joe, wouldn't be here, wouldn't be talking to you, Peter. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, unbelievable. And what an experience. What an experience for him. Absolutely. When I first followed Joe, I mean, what, I think it was when he started training Triple H. Ah, yes, Triple That's H. That's when yeah. I jumped on the Joe wagon. Because I'd known Triple H, I'd seen <laughs> injuries asked, he had. Yeah, you asked me the things. question about, um, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt, but you asked me the question about. Oh, the wager. The wager, the wager, the wager actually yeah. was. Yeah, if yeah. my show got more downloads than Triple H's show, I would. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And you know what? We yeah. gave it a good crack. We had 40,000 downloads or something ridiculous. We had a good crack, man. For Australian, we yeah. had a crack. Yeah. Uh, Triple H had 80, or something ridiculous, man. But fuck, mm. I mean, we gave it the best. And, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm proud yeah. of myself what we did. And, um, yeah, look, we couldn't beat. <laughs> we couldn't beat Triple H, man. Look at his fucking network, huge. So, mm. we tried our best. Shit. Fuck, we, uh, listen. I gave it my all and I, I appreciate the Australian people, I appreciate the world trying to get him here so he works for free, but it didn't happen and so be it. But I you know, know what? I watched a few times, I tried to get that. Oh, views. thanks, well, I appreciate that. Those, we, well, well listen, if he came out, it would be unbelievable. To get him out, he's going to be impossible. But never say never, and I'm not going to stop with it. Um, when I go back out there, so I'm going back to America uh, probably next year. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably go and see him. Hopefully, it'll be free to go see him again. Hopefully, get on your podcast again. Just, he does say every so because we still talk. We still message each other. Yeah. Uh, he's just a great guy. I don't know. Just he, he's a. He always, I'm big on paying it forward. Right, a lot of people in this industry don't pay it forward. I'm a big one. You got to pay it forward. I just keep. Uh, you must get sick of me. But I never want. Uh, I always want to pay it forward because he deserves it. I always want to give people credit. I just just mm. to pay it forward. I don't want to see why people don't do it and people don't give it up and people credit like that. So. I guess my full credit, I'll keep paying it forward, keep showing him love that he deserves, and he's just mm-hmm. a legend of the sports performance industry. So, thank you, Joe, if you're watching. Uh, he probably won't be, but if he is. <laughs> I mean, one day he shared, yeah, or, was, uh, shared, or he said, we put it up there, and then yeah. he wrote about it, and then, yeah, that's awesome. No, he, yeah. He's an idol, he's an idol, man. We get an idol like that, that's fair. But say that, though, I get people, young kids, saying that, it's kind of through, I'll say on the Joe, over one word, Young coaches and trainers me saying you're my idol from all around the world. I'm like, holy shit, I'm actually living my dream here. That's fantastic. How cool is that, eh? Yeah. If you believe it, you know, manifestation, visualization, anything's possible with your mind. Mindset, seriously. Absolutely. It's pretty cool. Now, I'm really looking forward to these questions here because I know a lot of people can be interested yeah. um, to your answers. But can you, I guess, tell us where do you think the fitness industry is at in its current state? Yeah. And uh, following that, explain where do you think it's heading at the moment? Yeah, saturated market right now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very saturated. Listen, it's um, it's a weird one right now. It's really yeah. weird. It's it's it is saturated. It is. You've got your F forty five. You've got your CrossFit. You've got everything. You got these body fits. Have you seen them all? Fucking, they're all they're all self, oh, yeah. same model. Everyone's doing it. It's that circuit. Do you know what I mean? Like that. It's that low overhead. It's that small plate, man. They're all doing it, man. It's it's just. Mm. Mm. It's, it's hard one. I was talking to you before about it. It's, yeah. it's very different. The market is poised. It's the and, and then now, and on top of that, I've told you, performance centers popping up everywhere. Yeah, you know, I've told you that, brother. Mm. I've, I've just yeah. told you that. Yeah. It yeah. is a market that is saturated. Yeah. Mm. Um, oh, fuck, what do I say? Shit. What would you say is the biggest hurdles are for it if it's to... Just, listen, I think that if you, if you want to start... Like if you want to do what I do, right? You want to train athletes, it's, it, it's very hard. It's still not mainstream. But yeah. the next 10 years will be mainstream. Do you know why? The young kids come through hell. Because what happens is there's a young kids come through, they buy into it and they understand it more. Yeah. We need to keep pushing education. And that's why I kept saying, yeah, the reason why I did this is because so I use social media, social media as a medium to push out my message. And through that, what happens is more... I wanted people to start talking about applied sports science, strength and conditioning in Australia. No, I was talking about it. Yeah. But if you, don't, uh, if you don't ask the question, you can't talk about it. If you don't push it on social media, social media was a great tool for me because it got to the masses. Yeah. The, even, <laughs> even when people commented negative, I loved it. Do you know why more reach? I love when people comment. Do you know why more reach? What people see it. Yeah. Good or bad, I don't care. If you don't, if you don't agree, I couldn't give You're a fuck. About it. Yeah, but but people are dumb, right? People, people, yeah. What people don't understand is when you hated on me early on, thank you. You made me, you gave me a career. People are dumb. You think I give a fuck, fuck what you think about yeah. me? No, it's great. Thank you. Keep going. But oh, please, call me a dickhead on this. We want more people to reach this. People don't understand yeah. how. I know, listen, I know how to annoy people. I know how people like me. I'll ask, I told you how I am. Like, 
I do things spur of the moment, yes, sometimes, but most of the time I've pre-planned it. What people don't understand about social media is this. When you write something on someone's post, they get reach, free reach. Well, that would happen, people don't understand it. My thing is I learned it through my uh, my mate who owns, he owns this and Beyond the, you know, Beyond the Valley. Yeah, Beyond the Valley. So he owns Beyond the Valley. Yeah. We don't, a lot of people don't know that. Um, but he uh, is kind of, I haven't seen him for a few years now. I mean, he owns this, and he's got a percentage in this, but mm. he helped me set this up. The, 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 how do you put it, the promotion or something like that. But I learned it all myself. Like in terms of people go, how does it take you to write this? You know, I used to write, write these long, uh, long ass, I used to do a video. Like there's not enough applied stuff. So I used to do a video of my athlete training. It could be any athlete, football, cricket, rugby, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And then I used to do a long write up on the theory and the application behind it. People loved it. Mm. But I, I, I used to love that stuff. And I, I still do, I still do write ups, but yeah. they're detailed write ups, done a set of science, art. This is applied real world. People were crying out for it. I did it. Mm-hmm. And um, I still love it, man. I still love doing that shit. These days, you know, I've got a lot of um, educational uh, material at woodfordshop.com. I've got a uh, video series. I've got another video series coming out. I've got ebooks. I've got fucking mm-hmm. a private membership, game chat. You know, this, is, this is seven years in. This is what we're developing. We're developing this online stuff, online platform, mm-hmm. online platform, you know, stuff like that. I want, I want my our knowledge, our passion, everything to reach more people. That's what I want. I want the mm-hmm. brand to expand, you know. Um, I know where the brand's getting, you know, we're going to keep working on it. So, and the same thing, you've got to be, you know, to be consistent, you've got to have continuity, you've got to push the same message. And the biggest thing you've got to remember is you have to stay the course. Everyone needs to get hard. Mm. It's a hard industry to make money, man. But you've got to stay, if you truly love it, you stick at it. And the thing is, when things get hard, that's why you stick at it, because it's your passion. That's why you choose a job, which is your passion. When yeah. things get hard, you stick at it. 100%. Yeah, well, that's the thing, I think, like, we were even talking about that, I suppose, your, um, You've been very vocal with your criticism of the fitness industry. Yeah. So, which yeah. is, yeah, like I said, I think a lot of things that you say has a lot of weight, one with a lot of weight behind it, but it's, yeah. I think what you say is what I think a lot of people want to say or don't say. Oh, people right? say, yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've been doing this since yeah. I So I think, I think me, I had enough of it. I just said, I'm not going to put up this shit anymore. So, mm. listen, I get a dog one even though. I'm not going to yeah. die. I told you that before. And my mate died of um, uh, cancer. He had stage four, um, I played football with him. He was stage four um, uh, uh, cancer in his head. Now, he uh, passed away at 30. He had, he had 10. He fought it for 10 years, though. Um, but the worst part, he got married had, had, as a kid because he was in remission. He had a kid. The reason why I'm saying that story is because, regardless of everyone out there, you might be sitting there and whinging about your fucking life and how fucking hard it is. Well, you know what? It's not that fucking hard because you still got your health. You know, Archer, um, his, his son's going to, and Hannah, his beautiful wife, I mean, um, is going to. Grow up without a fucking kid, uh, a dad, and, um, you know, fucking, you, you have lost all that fucking hard. And <laughs> I think that was a big, for me, it's like, fuck it, you know, I don't know how much longer I'm living, might as well go after it. And mm. So many people are worrying, you're living, you know, if you're worried, you're living in fear, man, it, it's not, what do you keep asking, what are you afraid of? What other people's opinion on you? Like, uh, yeah. That, you gotta ask yourself, you gotta keep questioning and asking yourself that. Like, I think too many people are too scared of other people thinking about them not to ask the question. I, 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 I started this to be the man. I told everyone what I was going to do. I systematically went out and I've done it. And I'll continue to do it. And people hated on me for it, bro. They hated on me for coming out and telling people, this is what I believe in. Mm. Why, if, if no one talks about nothing, you need someone to actually question the status quo or nothing gets done. Yeah. And I kind of felt at the time, everyone was coming after me. I was 25 years old and they were belittling me. And they are consistently belittling me. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh man, I remember early days how hard it was putting out a video, yet all these heroes were fucking bagging me out. It's like, that time, man, I was, but I was 25, man, I was just starting, you know, you still don't know who you are. And they came after me, and I said to myself, you Woody, stick out this, because I'm so headstrong, stick out this, the rewards yeah. will come. I used to always say that, and nothing, like now nothing can beat me, like I can't even see anything beat me. Like, these people came after me, they're the ones who probably want jobs. It's, like, it's just sad, bro, like, mm. it is what it is, bro, I guess, you know, I up with people as much as I can. And when I say up with people, I will never ever write a negative comment on someone else's post. Never have a look. I've never done it, but I've written posts on my opinion. On my, that's my. That's why I do the fuck I want. Yeah. I'll never come on. You want? I'll never come on your this yeah. guy's post. And what is the point? You're going dick. Never do that. Yeah. I've never done it. I'm not going to waste my time. People like to come on mine. That's fine. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Do it. Thank you. You fucking moron. Do you think all that criticism made you better? Fuck. Hey. That's yes. Because mate, yeah. I'm, I'm. I'll tell you right. You know what? Yeah, I. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> point. I have. That gave me such thick skin. There's nothing yeah. that can get to me, mate. There's literally that that helped me so much. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad they did it because it got at the start it was hard, man. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. very tough, very tough. These days, I just mind fuck people now. If I want, like, I could play games with them, 
Uh, because I'm used to it now. Like I, I've, I'm so good with it now. Mm. Nothing can. I, I, because of that. And when I say mind games, it's not. It's not that I want to fuck mind games. But if it's more like sometimes I get very bored with people. Um, no one really. No one really has a crack anymore. Like I just. I don't know. It's, mm. But at the start, you're all having to have a crack because here's the thing. When you go out and you try something new that's out of the norm. Yeah, people just come after you. They're gonna question. Yeah, questioning. Oh, yeah. but yeah, but hey, who's questioning now, eh? Hey? Yeah. Fucking idiots. No, not you guys. But you know what I'm saying? Like people yeah. are fucked, man. People, you know what? People, <clears throat> people want to belittle you because mm. they fear that you're doing something they want to do, but they're too scared to go out and do it. Just hey, I tell the, I told the fucking world who I was seven years ago. I told you what I was gonna do, and I systematically went out and did it. How many people you know that? I back it up. I'll keep backing up. I told you I'll be the man. I am the fucking man. I've been running this game for seven fucking years. Seven. And I'll run the next 30, right? And I told everyone what I would do, and I've done it. Mm. So give me, you know, I'll pay that part. And the worst part is, is the the, the, the worst part, as Jake, my twice he says, he says this all the time. Yeah. It's the guys who pay me out, who pay, who know who paid me out in the past, right? Yeah. And still pay me out. Yet they're the ones who have can get paid because of what I've done. Who can train athletes? It's fucking retarded. But it is what it is. I find that amusing. Even Jay goes, "Don't you find this amusing that these guys are getting testimonials from Tac Cup athletes? Yet these are the guys who bagged you out." Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are fucked with too. Oh, I don't know. Like I, mm. I still once again, you can't once again. It is if if I, if I knew who the fuck they were, like I don't even know half the people that some dude will be my mates will be like. Well, I heard this guy, you know, talking in the sermon, I was with him, he was bagging you out. Do you know who some of them? Who the fuck? I don't know. Who is that? Hey, once again, I always say this. They know me. I have no idea who you are. Yeah. And I don't really care. Like, I'm, I don't really... <laughs> Listen, you're no... Like, my thing Doesn't is... Doesn't keep you up in the... <laughs> I know, but, but yeah. you know, Molly, I don't know. Man, like, hey, a yeah. boil, let's say my boil talks about my boil... Sh- I get my boil share of my status. Um, yeah. Like, all these high-level high guys in America, I'm... I believe I, I, I'm uh, the I love the Australian market, but it's a small market, man. I want I want to be known in the American market. That's my I told you. Do you mm. I want to be with yeah. them. I told you my, at the start I want to be known with the Franco Boyle. Mm. These guys. That's where I want to go. Them again better. I want to be known with those guys. Their private sector is huge. Am I am I saying that the private sector in Australia won't grow? No, it will. Yeah. But it, it's going to be slow over the next it's take time. Well, exactly over the next ten years you'll see a massive growth, right? Yep. And it'll keep growing. Um, so let, uh, let's say the next five years. So when I'm 33 this year, so 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, let's say 37, yep. five years, big growth. But I want to, I've always said, I want to be known with those guys. I'm, I'm putting the work, work my ass off, keep pushing good content. Um, I love what I do. And I, I, I I'm all, oh, as I told you, I've got Phil, uh, my boy, Phil Daru. Phil Daru, yeah, uh, very, Phil Daru. very excited about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. well, actually, yeah, well, Phil, 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 yeah, Phil's a great guy. So Phil coaches everyone out there, um, He's the uh, yeah, SNC coach of Edson Barbosa. American top team. American top yeah. team, yeah. So uh, yeah. Barbosa and fucking uh, Janet Joencheck and uh, Poirier, my favourite fighter. So uh, yeah, Dustin Poirier. So um, him and I are going to uh, we do a uh, podcast this weekend. So once again, that's the American market. And then I'm going to him and I are going to do a workshop in Australia, a few workshops in Australia, hopefully. And then we're going to go to America. So once again, my market. I want to. I've always said that I roll. I want to roll with them. That's yeah. my thing. I want to. Mm. I want to be the best. Yeah. I want to be the best. I want to be known as the best. And that's subjective. But when I say I want to be known as the best, I want to be known as the best because I actually am the best. Right. Yeah. I, I, I give kite, I get results. I don't give a fuck what you think about my athletes. As long as you get results, it's the main thing. I care about one thing, results, client satisfaction, athlete satisfaction. That's it. Yeah. Right? That's all that should matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people want to nitpick about fucking exercise selection, all this bullshit. Who cares? As long as you get results and it's safe. The risk, the, the, the reward outweighs the risk. That's a safety's number one concern. Yep. That's all I have. And if the science doesn't back it up, so fucking what? The, the application is in front of the science, right? You can't, you can't be waiting all the time. Sometimes you're going to do things that aren't, um, aren't validated. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's hard for people, some people idiots to understand online. But you know what internet is like. Everyone's a fucking hero. So, yeah. I mean, for me, it's always like just, just keep showing your love, your passion. That's my thing. So, I'm glad that I, I just want to keep pushing this forward. I want to keep moving it forward. And I'm not the only one, mate. We have an army these days. It's fantastic to see, man. It's good. But once again, mm-hmm. I still do get a bit annoyed when they are, with so many guys who I know for a fact paid me out early days. Uh, because of what I did and put my neck on the line, they can get paid to do that, and it is a bit annoying. But if I saw them, I'd let them know that. But 
It'd be yeah. funny, I guess. I don't know. I just I like stirring people up, I guess. And yeah. People get so annoyed at what I say. Do you know what it is? It's to, it's to do with how I say things because people take my aggression, they take it wrong. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just my like, pa- yeah. It's, uh, you know, I don't but know. But like I said, it's just, it's just your passion. It's, uh, yeah, so yeah, it's just what my love for it, man. Like, I was, you see it, like, I'm very loyal, fiercely loyal. Like, I yeah. quit a job. We were doing an academy, me and my mate, uh, Hendo, shout out to Hendo, we run a fo- female football academy here. But he's a football coach. He got fired by this guy for no reason. I told him to fuck. I said, yeah, I'll quit too. Fuck you. We'll run our own. I'm yeah. loyal. I'm, if you're friends with me, I'll be friends with you. But most people aren't like this in the city. They just backstab each other. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. See, now I've met you. You seem very loyal. Also, you, you come from a good upbringing. So that already says that, you know, you, you seem loyal, you're articulate, you're from a private school like Brick. They're the guys you want to associate with. They're the yeah. people. I don't want to associate with bad people anymore, man. I think... But this industry as a whole is a, is a bit toxic. I just find that everyone's trying to one-up each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, listen, and I, listen, I'm not yeah. going to say I'm perfect in that. Like, the reason that, but saying that though, I do not go after someone like you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The ones I go after, the ones that screw over people, yeah. the ones that lie, do you understand what I'm saying, right? I'm not going after someone You're like yourself. Small target. Well, no, 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 small target. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. Yeah. I wouldn't care if they're, what I'm trying to say is, if you're doing the right thing and you're not screwing over people, well, that's great. You want to learn. That I want to learn too. Like I, I'm, I don't know everything. That's that's no one knows everything. But mm. for me, it's like I go after the people who just sell bullshit to people who lie. Detoxes, skinny yeah. meat tech, the influencers. Get fucked. You know all those idiots. Like they're ruining me. But I don't know if you know the the likes button's gonna go on Instagram. Have you heard about this? No, I haven't actually. Get ready for this. It's gonna go. Yep, it's gonna go. I oh, very soon. So what are they gonna do? You know the whole thing's gonna change. So what's happened now? You talk about flooding, it is flooded. I'll, I'll read this out for you viewers. Listen to this, yeah. right? This is uh, what happened. My mate said this, and he said times are changing. Read the whole thing. Listen to this. This girl, right, has two million followers. Two million, right? She couldn't sell 36 shirts, t shirts, with this company. Do you want to know why? It's because the market's changing towards you need authenticity, you need good quality content. People, people yeah. start to go, I don't give a shit about some girl naked or some guy half naked with a supplement anymore. I want to know, there's so many people now pushing high level content, they go, I don't want to buy that. Why would I do that when I've got this guy here? Who cares? Yeah. People switching on that because of people who's pushing it. So this chick, <coughs> she couldn't buy it. No shit. This is no shit. She had 2 million followers. Here. The influence of bubble is bursting. This young lady has well over 2 million followers and couldn't sell 36 shirts. Focus on genuine engagement and not followers because they aren't going to buy a thing. Mm. Engagement. So do not worry about how many people are following you. Fuck, stop worrying about your likes, engagement. Give high quality content, give it back. That's, how, back. that's, that's how I gave it. Like that, people that start used to say, you give me too much weight, why? Because my thought process was this. If I can expose what high level education, educated pie content is, more people wins, everyone wins. My thing is about legacy. The more people I can help, the more people I can expose to other people content, everyone wins. Yeah. And it just so happens I was I, I took responsibility on myself because I felt like no one else was doing it. And yeah. I said, I'll be the man here, I'll put my hand up, I'll take this, I'll take this uh, this role on by myself. Because no one else is gonna do it, I was gonna do it and run with it. You gonna come with me or not? And my thought process was people are gonna love me or hate me, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna drag as many people as I can with me. And the minute I took accountability, responsibility for my life and the industry, we all benefited. Now you can love me or hate me for that, that's fine. Yeah. But I was the one who did that. And that's why I say to people, I always say this to people, no one else was doing it. It's like no one was doing it. No one was willing to question it. You need a voice, want to push it. I did that. I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that I did it because um, if I didn't, I'd just resent myself. And uh, I, I had something buried in here. I kept going, it's good in here. It's, yeah. still, it's still here. You knew, it's still here. I love it. Um, and you just got to love what you're doing. What you said, you gotta keep giving back. Engagement yeah. is number one. Yeah. Good high quality content number two. So you just keep going with it. And don't don't be consistent. Don't think it's gonna happen overnight. Takes yeah. time. Stick at it and you'll and honestly you will make it. But you have to stick at it. Yeah. Well that's actually you mentioned that the whole sticking out. One thing I always really thought was when you actually were challenging fitness to start <laughs> with yourself. Yep. Um, by the way, that, that's that's an important point to bring up because yeah. to bring this up is there's no legislation. And what I mean by that, legislation has to be passed by the government, by the health minister, right? He's got to pass that parliament, yeah. right? The only way this industry is going to change to stop all these people, these social media influencers, yeah. these health bloggers, to stop making our industry look like a joke, there's legislation that has to be passed down, right? Yeah. Hasn't been passed down, right? No. We have to pick it for it, right? Now, here's the thing. <coughs> Fitness straight can't do shit. Don't do anything. You can come out tomorrow and say what the fuck you want. No one's going to stop you. I'll tell you right now, right? That's what I got from Bill. 
Bill got fired as well afterwards. Now, I don't know if it was to do with me. Who knows? But he got fired. Here's the thing about them. I don't, well, I don't like them. I have no time for them, really. Mm. Because what are they doing? It's not making any... You need to get legislation. Mm. It has to be legislated up the top. I'm going to try and go up high now. Mm. So I've been, um, been trying to make as many networks as I can. No one got shit. This yeah. industry is most ungoverned industry. Uh, my, my best advice is to anyone out there is um, just focus on yourself, focus on your education, your knowledge, and your client results. Mm. Don't worry about anything else. The upskill, don't worry. Uh, <coughs> the upskill is don't worry about CEC points. People always go, do you have CEC yeah. points? No, you, what the fuck? I don't give a fuck about that. Do you think I went to America all those times with CEC points? No, I went there because of the experience. Yeah. Stop focusing on CEC points, focus on the, uh, the quality of course content. Well, that's the big thing. Like, yeah, we've talked about CEC points yeah. and all this yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I see all, like, even, you know, you talk about, because we obviously being personal, you have to, like, you pay for, like, the membership. Yeah, you, do you, you a member there or not? I am. You um, have to be, do you have yeah. to be, though? Uh, well, you do, so for, oh, for the job, some particular jobs, yeah, you, you have, have to, to be. be. Yeah. But my big thing always is, like, you pay X number, but what do you get back? What do you, well, that's again, what do you get back? Ask yourself, what do you get back? And that's the thing, fitness. How much, you, how much you pay per year, if you don't want me to ask you, what is it? I think it's two years, about 400. But two years, 400? With the insurance, with yeah, insurance plus the actual association as well. Yeah, I, I don't, um, yeah. yeah, I'm a, I don't. And that, that's the big thing, like, I asked someone's question, maybe the moment we're hearing you, like, speak about it, and yeah, that's just something yeah. was like, yeah, what do we actually get yeah. back? And, like, well, I'm there? doing, I'm doing a performance summit this year, I think later this year we're doing one, mm. and um, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do from that is create a network of fitness industry professionals across the board who just give a fuck about the industry and want to raise it. And yeah. that's what we're trying to do. Listen, this is going to take a few years to do, but I've got good enough good people around me. Mm-hmm. The profile we've got to build is because the, the industry as a whole is, as I said, it is flowing. Yeah. You and, want to do it the right way. You well, you're still the right, yeah, we're going to do yeah. it the right way. We're going to take our time with it. Yeah. But it is fucking flooded. I mean, yeah. as you said, around your area, fuck me. I mean, yeah. you kind of just think to yourself, there's fucking just so many people doing it. What's the difference? And mm. listen, if you care about your client, your athlete, you're getting fantastic results, and you, you, you and you push, you know, you, you keep keep developing. You can only get better from there. So I think, look, listen, I oh, look. It was great to chat with him, and I really fired up, but because that was probably ten years, eleven years of pent up aggression, and yeah, and how I say things, I just by love for what I do. And mm. as I said, people people don't like it. Some people do. I don't care. I just think it's people say to me all the time, oh. Don't you care like what people fucking think? No, not really. Like, don't give a fuck what my parents think. What the fuck do you think other than that guys think? You know? Yeah. I just be me. I just don't care. I'll do what I want, when I want, how I want, and I'm living my life. Mm-hmm. Do your, do you do you? You do. I'll do me. Don't tell me how to run my life. Don't dictate. People do that all the time. They're like, you should act like that. Well, you should act that way. Exactly, man. Just do. Look, at the end of the day, if you if you let someone else dictate your life, you're gonna be in trouble. But hey, if you do what you want to do, and it's not being rude, not harming anyone, I say that to people. Do you? Yeah. And I say, you don't have to watch me. You don't make, oh, do you think I bought your head, uh, gun your head? No. Yeah. Not all that. Listen, people are just, listen, people just want to get angry for saying getting angry because people are just lazy. That's all it is. People look at me and they, they see someone who's driven, hungry, mm. and they're like, they're probably intimidated. Fair enough. Mm. I'm good looking as well. I mean, don't look at that head, eh? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not good looking. Definitely not. In that yeah. photo. Yeah. Fine. yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because that's a big thing. I mean, the other thing as well is like, that's what I was going to ask about you as you're starting a certificate like a three and four and four oh, starting yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's like obviously you wanted to... <coughs> well, yeah, that's, that's a good point and that's a good segue because <coughs> what happened was um, I shout out to Orphic Education who's my... A lot of people come to me to do set three and four for years and I said no, 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 no and then what happened was one of the former directors of my old gym facility that was shut down west and another guy used to do the internship here um, started a company called Orphic and they do a Cert 3 and 4 in fitness yep. um, and I said to them I'll do it on the proviso A, B, C, D yep. we run it at the highest level we can but we price it out to be high level but not not so high level where it's stupid early on um, and I want the students to get go away confident and confident understanding the science enough they can insert three and four mm. but the ability for them to be successful if you're going to do a course here on them, I want everyone to be successful I don't want them to fucking you yeah. mm. like man people churn through three and four without any fucking care it's money for me I actually if you're going to do it at Woodford you, I want you to be successful but you have to put in the work as well um, and that's why I got the set three and four game because I said fuck it I want to throw my hat in the ring here instead of complaining mm. it's a terrible course so in terms of the, the, it's just stupid like 
Mm-hmm. We throw our, we throw our own shit in there. We chuck all this our own crit, which is that's where they get the benefit from. Yeah. <coughs> that's why we do it, throw our own shit in there and just to try and develop it. But no, it's been fantastic so far. It's been good to watch the kids, the kids and so with the kids and the dad. Dad, um uh, it's been good to watch the students come to the ranks and yep. they love it. No, look, I just I just think that it is, listen, this industry can be fantastic. We we could be this industry could be so much better, brother. So mm. much better, brother. No question. If we all just if we just honestly started to raise the standard and we stop these people jumping in there, stop these social media gurus claiming they're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a, some banana girl who's got a good rig says eat 48 bananas and you can, oh, come on man, for fuck's sake, what a joke. Where's the key? We're see, yeah, we're seen as a fucking boss, you know, in, in, with good reason to, but listen, until we stop these fucking snake oil salesmen, nothing's going to change. So mm. my thing is, I'll, I'll keep... If you don't like calling people out, that's fine. I like doing it. I'm happy to do it. Let me do it. Well, you all fight it and you just keep backing me and I'll keep doing it. I actually like doing it. It's fun. I get a kick out of it. I'll be real with you. I like what I do. I told you, I like when people really go after me. It's funny. I laugh. I don't know. I just, maybe it's because of when I was, when I was younger and I just caught so much shit from football. I was playing football. I don't know. Nothing. Yeah. If, what I'm trying to say to people, if you get that common thing is, Mm -hmm. if you let someone else's opinion Sway how you feel about yourself. You need to really reevaluate, reevaluate your life. Like if you, if I put that, that that thing on deadlifting, and so many people are upset. Mm. Don't get upset. I just get try. I try to you know rope people in a little bit, and yeah. people just get too upset. Like just, it's just an opinion. Just mine. Don't have to. It's okay if you don't like it. It's cool. If you have an opinion on me, don't like it. I'm not gonna say oh, well, that's your opinion. It doesn't. Just you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Very yeah. important to get the message across because mm. in this day and age, man, far out. People get real upset. They yeah. really do. As, as, as mum said, you really like it. People get real annoyed at what you say, really. Mm. Just we're too politically correct, I think. A little Poli- bit that's it. It's politically correct. Oh, it's fantastic. Just way too much. So fuck that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, mate, in, a, in a world of political correctness, I'm going to be the opposite. I'm just going to be, mate, I'm going to use common sense, really. No one use common sense. We're too far that way these days. Too much political correctness. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I just, I hate it, man. I just, uh, listen, use common sense. Be a good person. Um, and then just try, try, you know, don't, I just think there's too many fake people out there, bro. Mm. Especially in our industry, we're flooded with them. Yeah. All these fake ass people, and then you got you, you know, people like yourself, you know, your company, you try to do the right thing. It's just very hard, man, because it's such a flooded market. Yeah. So what, what people do is, because they, they, they want to stand out, they just they try and bring them at the wheel, and it's just dumb shit. Yeah. And that's the most saddest thing is, they're the ones who make all the money, the people trying to do you know, the right thing. Yeah, it's just easy. Right. Yeah. Just don't stick to what the basics and just all that. That's just keep getting better, I think. And mm-hmm. that's all we can do is come together as, a, as, a, as an industry. Mm-hmm. No, very good. All right, well, I guess I really appreciate the time. I guess one of the big things I wanted to close with is, yeah. I suppose, I guess, what's in store for, I guess, this, the rest of the summer <laughs> and, uh, and beyond. Ah, well, fuck. Uh, I mean, I went on my first international, if you call it that's New Zealand, like workshop. Yep. I feel like that, um, I don't know, man, like, I. Uh, Keep coaching, keep developing this industry, keep doing what I set up to do seven years ago, and that was to expose high level quality training content to the world, yeah. to Australia, and then keep exposing it and keep developing the profile. And the reason why I want to keep doing that is because the bigger my profile gets, the more people. But look, I've always said this, regardless if you talk good or bad about me, right? see this, right? When I first got this cover, people were talking bad about me. I loved it because people, at least when you talk about me, what are you talking about? Performance coaching. It's always, I win every other week. It, I do half of this stuff on purpose because at least, at least we're talking about it. Before I know it, it was like strength and conditioning was like this taboo somebody. It's like, no, no, I'm going to sing it. I'm going to sing it. Sing it. Hide it. No, no, no. Shut the fuck up. There's no fucking secrets. Here's my secret. Yeah. Fuck. Hinge them, squat them, push, pull, push something heavy, jump, land, sprint, change direction, recover, eat, sleep, repeat. Simple. For fuck's sake. But no, people don't want to know that. You're going to have a fucking gimmicky exercise. Fuck me. Listen, keep it simple. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Apply overload, individualize it, and I promise you get results. But you know what the most important thing is? Adherence. Stay adherent, adhere to the program, stay consistent. Mm. My thing is, at the end of the day, I want people talking about me. I want people talking about me. Do you know why? Because they're going to talk about Prop SNC then. And then everyone wins it. That's the whole idea. Yeah. And unfortunately, if people would get angry at me, he's like, oh, he's so arrogant. Then do it yourself. Yeah. Then put, if you, if you think that you can do a better job than I've been told a thousand times, it's like, Oh, I can do what he does. Then go do it. Do it. I, lo- I want to see it. Go do it. Yeah. I want to see you do it then. Put your balls on. Go talk on camera like I do with my passion. But they don't. They're too scared. 
but don't, don't, don't sit there and don't have skin in the game and keep throwing shit at me because if you're gonna do it, then I'll keep, oh, hey, I'll come up like that guy who wrote that note, that person who wrote that note to me at the start of the year, did you see that? Someone wrote a note to me about how I need to pull my head in, but they respect me out on passion, just weird, and they didn't leave their name. What? Soft, yeah. soft people, oh, yeah. people pathetic, you wanna keep out of, you know what it is? The insecure of me being confident and saying it how it is because I have, and going and doing it, and because because I believe in myself, they're so insecure they don't want to say it. It's pathetic. Yeah. It's just pathetic. But that's how I believe society is today. So listen, where I'm going, I'm going one place. We're going the world. That's what we're taking the brand of the world, yeah. which um which I believe we have always said, I've always said, um, give me ten years, I'll make it worldwide brand. Um I wanna keep helping uh, the Australian market develop. i I do work. I do all these things like um, like stuff like this, I consistently do because I don't have to, I don't have to take your message, mm. but I did because I want I want to help this industry grow. I want to help, you know, it's going to help you guys out as well. It's all about with you. More people think I'm, you know, for, I hope you think I'm a good person. You know, yeah. a lot of people got this a wrong idea about me. I guess when you meet me, it's like I'm full on, but I actually love what I do. It's more the fact it's my passion. Yeah. You know, I don't have to do it. I spent an hour, 45 minutes talking about getting no beforehand. Yeah. You know, and then people want to fucking bag me out. So, oh, anyway. My, I, 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 I find that interesting. Like, don't, don't judge someone unless you meet them. And then afterwards, if you think I'm an arsehole, okay, fair enough, that's cool. So be it. So be it. So be it. But don't judge them based off that. And that's probably what I want to go. I'm going to keep going around Australia, keep talking, Mm -hmm. keep talking to people like you, keep networking, keep going around America, keep getting better, but most importantly, keep changing the game. That's the most important thing. I think it's a good way to end it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's finish on that, changing the game.